Hello techies. Welcome to our brand new video series focused on helping you get the most of your experiences in life. Before we start the video, let's know about Uptalk. Uptalk is a live, interactive platform for software training, furnishing robust personalities who could take on universal business platforms. Okay. So we maintain assignable roles. Let's create one for ourselves. Let's call it as a www compensation partner. For example, we call it as a compensation partner. So we are giving it some roles. So we are creating a role. So we will add, or this add, or we'll create a role using this add row icon at the top. And we will say what is the name of the role. www. Compensation Partner. Right. This is a new role that we are creating. www. Compensation Partner. Now enabled, for this is where we decide what kind of organization. This compensation partner role will be visible for, or this will be applicable for. Now, what do you think? What kind of role is this? Is it an XCM role, or is it a finance kind of role? Compensation partner. It's yeah. XCM so. No, it's in sorry. XCM. So which type of organization should we use? Should we use like supervisory or cost center or location hierarchy? What kind of organization should we use cost center, cost center hierarchy, or would it be rather like supervisory organization? Cost center. Will we have a compensation partner for a cost center? I think it's supervisory. It looks like the supervisory. So you may enable a compensation partner for a cost center. Nothing stopping you from doing that. But I think it makes more sense to be associated with a supervisory organization. So that's what I enabled. Now OK. Now here are some parameters, which I want you to pay some close attention. Because this is important. When you create, I don't want you to mess up the system like some of our other colleagues are doing. OK. Sales assign. Should we check this or not? It's a checkbox. You can either check it or you can leave it blank. Sales assign, meaning that whoever is creating this organization, whoever is assigning the roles or not, it will be assigned to that person. I mean to the position of that person. If Logo is doing the role assignment, it automatically say that OK. Double W compensation. Partner is local. Do we want that? We should not. Unless it's like you're doing a bulk thing where everywhere you have to do. Go and do it for your name only. It doesn't make sense. We will not use self-assign. Write for our assignments or for most of the tasks, even on the real world. When we are on the field, we are doing it for our customers. We will try to avoid self-assign. Okay, it is there for a very, very specific purpose. For the vast majority of our work, we will not use self-assign. The similar thing is restricted to assign self, assign roles in the business process. This is for the domain. This is for the business process, okay. But same thing. The for the self-assign. 
We will not do it. We will leave it black. Then comes restricted to single assignment. But does that mean restricted to single assignment means in an organization, you can only assign it to one person? I mean one position. Can you tell me an example where typically we assign it to one person? That role. Typically. The owner. Oh, no, yes. What about the manager? A supervisor. Yeah, I'm a developer. Typically, typically, I think. You see, I'm using the word typically. Typically, typically, a supervisor organization has only one manager. Correct. Typically. Now in the review question, can a supervisor organization have multiple managers? Multiple people who are assigned. Typically, 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 yes. Not metric. Yes. The supervisor organization. So they will ask you in the interview. Can a supervisor organization have more than one manager? Yes. Okay, can you give me an example? I mean, I'm behaving like an interviewer. Can you give me an example or scenario where multiple managers would be needed in an organization? Okay. Let me give you the answer. Think about a shift-based organization, a production facility, but there are multiple shifts. Okay. The same department, but they're working over multiple shifts. Okay. So you may need two or three managers to cater to the different shifts. Correct because you have a different shift. If the night shift is going on and somebody asks for a leave and the manager will only come the next day morning. Doesn't make sense. Right. You need to have the approval now. So you need to have one manager for each shift. Okay. So that is an example where you may need multiple managers for the same supervisor organization. So you can take this as an example and mention this as part of your interview. Okay. Now, how will I enable multiple managers for the same organization? The answer lies here in this particular page, restricted to single assignment. If I uncheck this, that means I will be able to assign multiple positions to this particular role. But, but if I check this as yes, that means there can be only one position assigned to this role. For a manager, Typically, we have this particular box checked typically like restricted to single assignment. We typically restrict only one manager per organization. But if you want to have multiple or managers in an organization, just uncheck this particular box in the assignable roles. All right. Remember this. Now hide on view if not assigned. Now, this is a very interesting thing, like we should always check it. Okay. Especially as part of our training, because we don't want this to clutter our system. If it do not, if you are not going to use it, 
we do not want this to show up, or each and every supervisor organization and show up as blank. Right. What's the point? We always should only show the roles that are assigned. In that way, we know that, yeah, this is the role that is assigned. This is the role that is not defined. It's easy to tell, but now what happens? We have 800 or 900 different roles, which are not assigned to anybody. It just makes working very difficult. So I would always recommend hide on you if not assigned. Okay. Then comes. Is leader or is supporting? Is this a leadership kind of role? Or is this a support kind of role? So a manager kind of a role is what kind of role? Leader or supporting? A manager. Manager. Leader. And when you created a supervisor, your organization or a company hierarchy or something, do you remember we had that option? A checkbox which said, include leader's name as part of the name. Right. Include leader in the name. Yeah, that box. When you created a supervisor, your organization, as anyone remember, and we clicked on that, yes, it started showing up the name of the manager. Write executive management within bracket, Daniel Slower. Is it it? So if you mark this role as a leadership kind of role, then whoever you assign to this role, your name will show up in the name of the organization as well. If you have clicked on that checkbox, you see here workers assigned to. And if leadership role are displayed as managers or leaders in the organization preview and the new organization chart, as well as in the org display when it is configured to include manager or leader in the name. Right. So think about this. So is this a leadership position? Otherwise it unnecessarily makes it cluttered. So if you are not sure, just say none of the above. I'm not sure if it's a leadership or a supporting role. Or if you want clarity, reach out to the person who has asked you to this, to create this security group. Is this a leadership position? Is this a supporting position? Okay, or is it nothing about that? Now, what is a supporting position? Let's say that you are the H, our partner, and your job is to help the manager and the other leaders to take care of the employees. Please do like, share, and subscribe to our channel. For more information, contact us at sales at the rateuptalk.com.